There have been a few Hillary Clinton sightings lately. She was here in Washington the other day, spoke to a women's group, and talked about how she admired their optimism, their persistence, and their resistance. That, of course, is a code word of opposition to President Trump. And occasionally she pops up uh, at a Broadway play or taking a walk in the woods at Chappaqua. And I'm just so struck because if you think about it, she would be dominating the news now if uh, 70,000 votes in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania had gone the other way. Instead, she's pretty much staying off stage. But has the Democratic Party really come to grips with her loss in 2016, the reasons behind it, and what lessons the party can learn? I mean, I don't think there's been much of a debate. Even the low-key uh, DNC chairman's race didn't really grapple with this. And what struck me was seeing a piece in the very liberal website Salon, which said that it, essentially that it is time to move beyond Clintonism. I'll just read a little bit of this. The grand irony says Salon, is that liberals are the ones who have started to sound increasingly like alt-right conspiracy theorists, uh, while people on the right, says Salon, are spewing their theories about the deep state and uh, Obama allegedly wiretapping Trump Tower and all of that. Liberals have gone in the other direction, embracing their own overwrought conspiracy theories with an all-powerful Vladimir Putin at the center of it. But, you know, it's not because of Vladimir Putin uh, that the uh, Democrats have not only lost the White House, both houses of Congress, about a thousand seats in the state legislatures uh, during the Obama years. Uh, and so it seems to me I'm not going to get involved in any speculation about who's going to run in 2020, mainly because I have no clue. Uh, but, you know, you have a party that was sort of split between Clintonism, which was always a sort of a centrism. And she moved to the left somewhat. But, you know, kind of a basic common sense, government is good, but let's make it just a little better, incremental changes. I never could quite figure out what Hillary Clinton's bumper sticker message was. And then you have the Bernie Sanders wing, the Elizabeth Warren wing, which wants to go much more left, but in doing so could further move away from uh, those people who used to vote Democratic in Rust Belt states like Michigan and Pennsylvania, who, was won, who have been won over by Trump. Uh, and so this is, I think, because um, there hasn't been much of this in the media either because Trump so dominates the news and his efforts to uh, repeal and replace Obamacare, battle with the media, um, tax reform, taking on the Washington establishment, draining the swamp, all of that uh, so totally uh, overshadows anything else uh, that Hillary Clinton, you know, is at the moment a forgotten figure. But I think that you know, the kind of incremental, centrist, steady approach that Hillary Clinton took. I mean, who knows what the landscape will look like four years from now, but it didn't excite anybody. It didn't seem to be a winning formula. It doesn't mean the Democrats need to move left. That's where the energy is in their party. They need to figure out how to connect with working class people. I mean, the Democrats in the old days were the party of working class people before they sort of became so wrapped up in identity politics and making every single group uh, women and minorities, obviously part of their base, uh, uh, but as well, you know, vegetarians and um, and so many other interest groups uh, that uh, a lot of people who work in factories, who work in jobs where they're living paycheck to paycheck, kind of felt the Democrats don't represent them anymore. Uh, so all of it is, this is to say that I think it's good that even liberal sites are examining why Hillary lost, whether there's any future for Clintonism, certainly not with Hillary Clinton, uh, but any future for Clintonism, and what direction the party needs to go in to be viable again in national politics. That is a debate that at some point is going to be fully joined, uh, and I think the media ought to play a role in figuring out we need two parties. What does that other party stand for?